you need to be prepared. These people will not be there for you when you need them. Put yourself in a position where you will not need them when the balloon pops. Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is just serving as a reminder that you need to continue to prepare. And if you're not preparing, for goodness sakes, you need to start preparing. And this is why. Ladies and gentlemen, who do you think the government considers too big to fail? These large corporations that use lobbyists to keep the pockets of the politicians full? Or you and me, the average American person that is just trying to live a peaceful life and raise a family? Well, if you guessed that they want to keep the large institutions as too big to fail, then you guessed right. And for those of you that may not understand what too big to fail means is this, is that if an institution fails and that institution has enough capital or enough value in nominal terms to affect the financial system, it is too big to fail. But what does too big to fail really mean? It means that that institution, instead of allowing it to fail because of its malfeasance in the way that it manages capital and its investments, instead of allowing it to fail, they are going to tax you and me to keep that institution propped up. That's what too big to fail means. So whenever you hear too big to fail, it just means that if an institution that is large enough fails, they will keep it up. They will keep its head above water with your and my labor. Here it states that Janet Yellen supports buybacks and Warren wants BlackRock deemed as too big to fail. Let's go ahead and cover buybacks really quick, ladies and gentlemen. So you know that these large institutions that have a lot of capital, they can borrow money very cheaply. They can borrow money for less than what the interest rate is set at in the bond market. And what do they do with that money that they borrow at less than what the inflation rate is? They take that money, ladies and gentlemen, and they buy back their own stock. They don't use that money to make things better. They don't use that money to invest in manufacturing. They don't use that money to train their employees. They don't use that money in order to hire more employees. They use that money to buy back their own stock, which causes an artificial shortage of those stocks in the stock market, which makes those stocks then be worth more in nominal terms. Pretty much, they borrow from the government at an interest rate that's less than inflation so that they can enrich their stockholders. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. But my question is this, what about you and me? Can we borrow money at 1% and then invest it no, we can't borrow money at 1%. Why? Because you and I, ladies and gentlemen, are not part of the ruling class. And it says here, Yellen, speaking on Wednesday before the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs, said she agreed with allowing share buybacks. Quote, I have been opposed earlier when we were very concerned about the situation the banks would face about stock buybacks, Yellen said. But financial institutions look healthier now, and I believe they should have some of the liberty provided by the rules to make returns to shareholders. See, ladies and gentlemen, that's what it's all about. It's in order for them to enrich their shareholders and themselves. And who are their shareholders, ladies and gentlemen? Well, let's take a look. Stock ownership is concentrated. As of 2021, the top 10% of Americans owned on average $969,000 in stocks. The next 40% owned $132,000 and the bottom half of families under $54,000. So what is this saying, ladies and gentlemen, that the top 10% own about eight times more in stocks than the next 40% below them and about 18 or so times more in stocks than the average American. It says here, we've seen a massive rise in the S&P since 2009, meaning that serious wealth has been made by the wealthiest of Americans. 
What's even more astounding is that the top 1% of households by wealth owned nearly 38% of all stock shares. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, this is why I said we need to continue to prepare because this is not going to get any better. As long as we have a ruling class that caters to the top 1% or even the top 10%, it's not going to work out very well for you and me. Continuing on, it says that they are expected to do just that as the buyback restrictions ease in the first quarter of 2021, which means that these institutions are expected to do just that, which is buy back their own stocks. And here is Mrs. Warren's argument as to why BlackRock, which is a $9 trillion company, ladies and gentlemen, needs to be considered as a too big to fail corporation. And let me show you exactly what it is that happens when an institution becomes too big to fail. Just a second. Let's go ahead and take a little segue into this. JP Morgan to pay $920 million for manipulating bond metals market. Did anyone go to jail? No. Do you think that they made more than $920 million in manipulating bond and metals market? Pretty sure they did. JP Morgan Chase to pay $250 million penalty over weak controls in its wealth management division. JP Morgan Securities pays grandmother $90 million for elder financial abuse. JP Morgan Chase will pay $2.5 million for secretly charging extra fees in crypto purchases. JP Morgan Chase pays $264 million to settle China bribery probe. They abuse their power. They abuse the fact that if they fail, they will be bailed out. They abuse the fact that they are immune to being put in jail. How many bankers have gone to jail, ladies and gentlemen, in the last 12, 13 years since the 2008 financial crisis? It was a crisis that was enabled by the Federal Reserve and executed by bankers and hedge funds. How many have gone to jail? How many people do you know that lost their homes in 2008? I guess they weren't too big to fail. BlackRock is the largest money manager in the world with nearly $9 trillion in assets. The firm last year helped guide the Fed when the central bank was buying corporate bonds. So ladies and gentlemen, what they're saying here is, is they're pretty much saying in our face that they broke the law by bypassing the law. So what happened here, what they're saying is, is that they helped guide the Fed when central banks was buying corporate bonds, is that the Federal Reserve cannot buy corporate bonds. They cannot go into the free market and buy corporate bonds. But BlackRock can buy them and then they can sell them to the Federal Reserve. And then the Federal Reserve will take those bonds, which are usually junk bonds, bonds that nobody else was going to buy, and then put it on their asset sheet. She continues to say that I think it's important to designate institutions whose failures would pose a material risk to financial stability. But whose financial stability, ladies and gentlemen? That's the question. Whose financial stability? You have to understand that they're not talking about your financial stability, nor mine. They're talking about the financial stability of these institutions that keep the pockets of the politicians lined. Plain and simple. If I'm wrong, please tell me why. Because these companies that are too big to fail, the institutions that would fail would be these companies. But when we fail, ladies and gentlemen, there's nobody around saying that we're too big to fail. It says here, that was the mindset of regulators that led up to the 2008 crash. And that is how taxpayers ended up on the hook for a $700 billion bailout of gigantic banks. And ladies and gentlemen, do you think that the next bailout of gigantic banks would be 700 billion? Try 10, 20, or 30 trillion. When the party is going strong, it's the job of regulators to take away the punch bowl. And it's not gonna happen, ladies and gentlemen. It's all bread and circus. You need to be prepared. These people will not be there for you when you need them. So put yourself in a position where you will not need them when the balloon pops. 
because there's no way that this can continue on for as long as it already has. Protect yourselves by making sure that you have all of the things that you need in order to sustain your standard of living. Make sure that you have water put away, food put away. Make sure that you have alternate energy sources put away in case the grid goes down. Make sure that you have all of those things that you need in order to continue to live when the system fails. And one of these days when we least expect it, this system is going to fail. And those of us that did not prepare will wish that we had. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a great weekend. Hope to see you tomorrow during our live stream at 12 p.m. Alaska time, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Other than that, remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper. I'm out.